good day class. Last meeting, we talked about the, the field of human resource management. And now, I will be discussing with you or presenting to you the, my PowerPoint presentations, which is all about managerial function and its definition. Right? Of course, this is our lesson number two under IT303, Industrial Organization and Management Practices. Right? I hope I can deliver the goods and I hope you will be listening and attentive to my discussion because at the end of this presentation, there will be a corresponding activities which needs to be complied by you. It is. It will be actually posted in our Google Class, and I hope everyone will be able to uh, complete with this activity because these are necessary or these are needed. Um, in, in as far as our uh, requirements is concerned, all right. So to start with, let me start by giving you the learning objectives. What are the learning objectives? in our subject today, or in our lessons today. These are one, to be able to collaborate to plan and perform as kept, to teach the functions of management, right? The second, identify the functions of management. You, at the end of the day, at the end of the lessons, you will be able to identify them. Um, what are the functions of a manager? And at the end of the, the lessons, you will be able to determine the difference between the function of management, right? So, to start it, to start with, uh, let us start by discussing planning, right? What is planning? When you come across with the word plan, what comes into your mind? Simple, very simple. Using our own parlance, Plano, na ba kay plano si mong kinabuhi? Do you have a plan in your life? But as far as managerial function is concerned or in the arena of organization, planning can become a management process. It is really a management process because it's concerned with defining goals for a future direction and determining on the missions and resources to achieve those targets. Okay. It is all about planning. Uh, when you plan out or things that uh, has to be undertaken or what are the things needed when uh, in relation to decision making, right? What is, what are or what is the future preferences or directions and uh, determining the missions and resources uh, in order to achieve those goals because to achieve one one goal to achieve a goal there's need there's a need to have a proper mission where you are going to where the company is heading to and of course comes along with it is of course the resources without the resources then you, one cannot prevail one cannot pay, you know uh, emphasize or take action according to plan and to meet the goals managers managers may develop plans such as business plan or marketing plan this is uh, you know true to uh, some business institutions you have to develop a business plan and a business plan includes everything all right and or a marketing plan, how will you market your products? There should be a corresponding plan, right? And, uh, you know, planning always has a purpose. Planning always has a purpose, all right? Then, now, what is decision making? All right, what is decision making, right? A decision making can be defined as a course of action purposely chosen from a set of alternatives to achieve organizational or managerial objectives or goals. Okay. We know for a fact that before a manager chooses a decision, there are a lot, there's a lot of uh, alternatives. 
Okay, and these alternatives are somehow uh, solutions to the problem, to the present or the significant problems. And it should be weighted accordingly, uh, which among these are more appropriate that could, that you can say has a higher percentage percentage of you know the problem being solved right and it is an integral a part of modern management decision making is an integral part of modern management kinahanglan gyud siya no kinahanglan gyud siya parte gyud siya sa management when you are the one managing the office or the institution institutions or uh, the organizations that you are in okay it is really essential it should be rational or sound decision the sound decision making is taken as primary function of management it is a primary function of management to be able to decide Uh, a decision which is really, you know, a sound decision, a rational decision, and essential. And, you know, decisions are made at every level of management to ensure organizational or business goals are achieved. Okay? In order that this, the goals of the business or organizations are achieved, then yeah, There has to be a decision making which is soundly and rationally uh, made by concerned individual or manager in particular. As such, decision making process can be further exemplified in the backdrop and of the following definitions. There's a lot of definitions. One is according to Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary, the term decision-making means the process of deciding about something important, especially in a group of people or in organization. It is really a process of deciding something which is very important for the group or for the company that you are uh, working with. And Another definition state is uh, taken from Triwatha and Newport defines decision-making process as follows. Decision-making involves the selection of a course of action among two or more possible alternatives in order to arrive at a solution for a given problem. This is what I'm saying a while ago. There has to be a lot of alternatives and these alternatives are somehow A solutions to the problems. But first and foremost, you have to define the problem. Just like doing a research, you need to define the statement of the problem. And on from that on, you can now what uh, make or some you know uh, alternatives uh, which in which you you believe that it could it could solve or this. Alternatives can solve the problems, or even you can ask for others' opinion and then weigh. Imo na timbangon asay maayo, right? Then, uh, in management setting, decision cannot be taken abruptly. It cannot be taken abruptly. From you know, you cannot just decide just now, right then and now, right then and then, without of course having some considerations. Yeah, without having a process, right? Otherwise, you do not know. In the future, you you are going to fail, and when you fail as a manager, it would uh, mean failure to the entire organization because the entire organization, you know, future is at stake, is in your hands as a manager, right? So you have to have a sound decision, and there's a need to you know, uh, to follow some process. And these are the following. One is to define a problem. You know, again, it cannot be taken, it, this decision cannot be taken abruptly. 
a lot of time is consumed while decisions are taken in a management setting. Decision cannot be taken abruptly again. A lot it entails a lot of time and a lot a lot of consideration. And these are the steps that needs to be followed. Suggested steps. One is the finding the problem. Uh, this is what I'm saying earlier, right? You really have to define the pro problem first. But and from that, that on, you will now, you know, put some consideration that, that, that is your starting point to move on with the process, to continue with the process. Define the problem first or find out if there is an existing problems that need to concern, that needs to be solved, right? Ano mang panalitan na akay, na akay kumpanya, ano mang wala mong tani profit run, wala mong, why are we losing, right? And why are we losing? You find out what is, uh, you know, the reasons behind you fail or you, you are losing enough, uh, you know, resources. And after defining the problem, you will now have to gather information and collecting data. This is a really scientific uh, process of you know, finding or making a decision process. It follows after defining the problem, you will now gather the information and collecting data, right? Questioners, whatever type of tool that you are using, a survey, etc., and etc. Then develop developing and weighing the options there are options it could be you know recommended or everything then you have to develop this develop these uh, alternatives and weigh them it's of them and find out which way you know and a bugat bugat way that you think of uh, this could probably perhaps solve the problem, the present problem that you have identified in the first steps. After weighing, you have to choose the best possible option. What is the best possible option? All right? Then plan and execute. You have to plan and execute. After planning and execute, take a follow-up question or the follow-up action you know when you plan and when you implement it does not stop there right there is this so-called follow-up action monitoring or we call it monitoring if there is uh, something something to be done and there is an exercise that is given and uh, has been and being followed by the people working behind it you have to monitor the progress. In terms of problem, monitor what is executed and find out as to whether uh, the progress, if progress in accordance to the in accordance to the plan, and according to the plan, then follow up question. That's how we do it. Then uh, let's talk about organizing. Organizing is the process of defining and grouping the activities of the entire process and establishing the authority and relationship among them. Organizing in management refers to the relationship between people, work, and, re and resources used to achieve the common objectives. All right. Organizing is a function of management which of course follows planning, right? In the earlier we plan out, then we now we tend to organize. After planning out, we have to organize, okay? And it is a function of management, which, you know, which synchronize or synchronization and combination of human, physical and financial resources will takes place, all right? Money mga resources, these are the three resources which are very important to get the results. Okay, again, the three resources are human, physical, and 
financial resources. We're going to say, human, of course we are referring to the people working, right? The members of the organization, the workforce, and physical, we can, you know, the structure or the, the, the organizational structure of physical, the, which includes, includes the, the structure of the company, the building structure, the supply line, mga materials, everything, the, the equipment, etc. And last thing is the financial resources. Uh, financial, we talk about money, diba? Uh, talk about money and, you know, unsay na asa kampanya. So, all the three resources are important to get the result. And therefore, organizational functions help in achieving our resource, which in fact is important for functioning of a concern. Okay. According to Chester Bernard, organizing is a function by which the concern is able to define the role positions, the job related and the co coordination there's the the word coordination between authority and responsibility hence a manager always has to organize in order to get results okay again organization organizing is a duty or is a function of management okay it's all about synchronization synchronize and a combination of the three resources, human, physical, and financial. Then, so to perform this function, uh, this would aid right, or this would help the managers to be able to perform his function effectively. One is to identify identification of activities. What is this all about? All the activities which had to be performed in a concern have to be identified first. It has to be identified what are the activities that needs to be complied of by certain concerned people or certain individual. For example, preparation of accounts. Who are responsible of preparation of the accounts? Of course, the accounting people, right? This and also we are we have the accountant we have the accounting department and making of sales who are in charge of making of sales of course those in those who are uh, you know included in the marketing marketing divisions <laughs> they're the ones who will do the making of sales record keeping who's in charge of record keeping Eva? who are record keeper, right? In also, who, who is the record keeper? It's just the HR, HRM office or the human resource management office. The quality control, who is in charge of the quali quality control? Here in also, we have QAMSI, right? QAMSI, quality control, headed by Dr. Stropi. Then inventory control, etc. When you talk about inventory, what are the things to be inventory uh, that, that needs to be quantum that needs inventory all right and who are the people in charge of this in our in our institutions we have the supply officers and the personnel working with him all right the supply officers then you have to de departmentally organizing the activities what is this uh, uh, steps is all about in these steps the manager tries to combine groups similar uh, combine and group similar and related activities into units or departments. Combine related activities and uh, into units or departments or departmentalize or departmentalize. Okay. Masama ng trabaho ko na. Sa ato iskwilan, in our university. That's why we are being departmentalized. In the college, one college, there is a department of chair or department of uh, industrial technology, department of electrical, electrical department, computer department, etc. etc. However, 
nahit po na dito sa ato nga sa organization and outside or the corporate world okay uh, there are departments or divisions na na uh, with corresponding activities or tasks uh, with needs uh, which they are required to do uh, to to comply with right then after then classifying the authority once the department are made the manager likes the to classify the powers and its extent to the managers that this activity is about giving a ramp or in order you know a ramp in order to the managerial position uh, this is called hierarchy okay classifying the authority by way of ranking all right then after which you have to coordinate okay there's sort of coordination between authority and responsibility okay? relationships are established among various groups to enable smooth interaction toward the achievement of the organizational goal okay so then you on these are the nature of organizing learning objectives perform analysis analysis about the work then identifying the task identify the work organization structure grouping the activities the grouping of, of activities necessary for attaining the objectives assignment of work then we have the delegation of authority the the this is the uh, nature again these are the nature these are the nature of organizing number four delegation of authority according to the authority structure and then number five the coordination there's a need to coordinate then the purpose of organizing is of course to aid to management it really aids it really helps a management uh, managers to be efficient one once you have properly organized everything from the department from the the Uh, work specifications, etc., and etc. It really aids, it really helps the management, and it facilitates growth and creativity. Creativity, so it an organization and becomes creative, and it ensures optimum use of resources. Cluster job into units, okay, classifying and grouping okay, into units. And again, coordinates. There's a need really to coordinate from one office, from one division, from one department to the other department. Then, oh, and you know, staffing. What is a staffing? All right, is the process of filling position or post in the organizations with adequate and qualified personnel. We have last meeting. We talk about uh, the the selection process. In recruiting, we have to select people who are you know really qualified for a certain job, and every job has job specification and qualification. The one that you will be hiring should answer, should cater, or should fit in uh, the needs, right? In terms of qualifications and skills. Okay, that is uh, one way of saying, or another term of that is staffing. Is 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 it is staffing is the process of acquiring, deploying, and retaining a workforce of a sufficient quantity and quality to create positive impacts on the organization and effectiveness. And and there are uh, features of staffing function. One is all. Pervasive function of management. It must be pervasive and dynamic function. It is also a dynamic and vast scope. All right. And it is very important. This is uh, the staffing is very important, you know, aspect in management because in staffing you will be able to train and develop, right? When you hire someone, it is not the, the the duty of the organization is not 
uh, you know, stop there. Hiring, of course, you don't need but you have to see to it that these people who you have hired will be able to develop, okay? Muna ang ginala in-house training or onboarding training. So, kinala sila i-train and develop so that he will he or she will be able to upgrade himself and grow and to answer the need, especially now that we are changing. The, the, the community is uh, very much changing due to the advancement of technology. So uh, there's a need to really upgrade ourselves to be able to fit in just like, you know, for uh, our to, 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 you know, to continue to be relevant uh, in the company. Relevant kaso needed ang imo uh, services. Then effective coordination. There must be effective coordination. Uh, staffing also entails effective recruitment and placement. It effective recruitment, and placement, building an effective uh, human resource. Mm. This need really to build an effective and human resource department because these are the ones, these divisions are the ones responsible in recruiting uh, new members yeah, as a company. An optimum use of resource enhances corporate payments and there's a job satisfaction. If this, all of these are being attended, then uh, people working with you will be, will, you know, will, will be satisfied when a uh, worker and where when an employee is satisfied, then he will be motivated to to work. You know, he will be motivated to work. Na yung mutas put ang inyong your revenue will you know increase. It is it draws a positive uh, outcome not just the employee but also the organization itself. All right. Then elements of staffing. These are elements of staffing manpower. Planning again. There's a need to plan out how many people that you you are going to hire. How many people? What is the exact number of people that need that is needed to you know to comply one activity or one job or or, or certain you know organizational activity? Then job anal- analysis. The job analysis. There's really a need to analyze. Uh, the kind of job or the job that you are offering, iba. And then there's a need of a really good, effective recruitment and selection process. And there should be training and development in order to again to to upgrade everyone uh, who are part with your company. And there's a need to evaluate the performance. We call it a performance appraisal. How is the the employee, you know, really working, or the is he really, you know, uh, giving up everything or giving everything as far as his uh, skills is concerned? So my young producto, naayo ba? Naayo ba yung panarbang? Then these are the scope of staffing. All right, hiring, motivation, okay? You motivate people after hiring, and then you have to maintain employee so that there will be low turnover rate, like Pahawa. Then there's a need to really have a camaraderie among members of the company. Human resource or human relations is very much needed. And I think that would be all. Uh, please do you know visit our Google class and answer the or complete the activities that is being posted there. Thank you and God bless.